Hey everybody, Mike Metley here from Recording Magazine with a quick look at a new product that we're reviewing in our April issue. This is the K-Mix from Keith McMillan Instruments. It's their first audio product and it is a very slick piece of technology. In this little box, we have an 8-in, 10-out USB audio interface, an 8-in, 10-out digital mixer with built-in DSP, everything from dynamics control and EQ to gating and even a global reverb, and a control surface, which you can use to control your DAW or your virtual instruments, all in a box that has no moving parts. In place of standard controllers like faders or knobs or buttons, all of the controls on the front panel of the K-Mix are made with a product called Smart Fabric. This is something that's proprietary to KMI. They've been using it in a lot of products, most notably in control surfaces like the K-Board and the Q-Nexus. This product is very sensitive to the touch. It's very inexpensive to build. It's very sturdy, and it can be backlit for visual feedback. As a result, what you have here is the technology that would normally be in a digital mixer or interface that would be much more expensive that's actually kept very affordable and made fairly sturdy because you don't have any moving parts to break off. The faders are very smooth to the touch. They have indicators for unity gain. These rotary dials are used not only for panning, but also to control parameters on the DSP effects. Right now, they're lit up with these pairs of dots to show that these six channels are in stereo pairs. The buttons access different pages of parameters, everything from monitor mixes and headphone routing to setting controls on your EQ and your gate and your reverb. The controls are nice because they really have thought out a lot of the things that people worry about when working with such an odd device, at least at first glance. There's a fine tune mode. So if you have a level and you hold down the fine button, you can now adjust these parameters within a very tight range. The bypass button not only lets you bypass effects, but it's also used as a sort of a shift button for shortcuts so that you can get your faders back to unity gain very quickly, or you can reset your pan pots to center. On the back, there are eight channels of input, two mic pre's, which are actually built by KMI. They're proprietary and they have lots of clean gain. Very impressive for a first outing for a company building preamps. And then for the outputs, you have eight outs on the back, plus a stereo headphone output on the front edge. Those 10 channels can be configured as a stereo output set, which is mirrored on your headphones, plus three sets of stereo aux sends, or if you want to work in surround, you can do that. This box will support up to 7.1 with up to eight channels of output in the back, and you can actually use the headphone output to run a subwoofer or an LFE channel. The reason it has these two USB ports in the back, this is something which is fairly common on KMI devices. By using one or both of these, you can use the device set up connected with bus power to a laptop the way I have it here, or you can attach an optional MIDI expander box to provide five pin MIDI in and out for control of external devices. You can also use either of these ports to power the device standalone by plugging in a power supply, which it comes with. It's a very neat little box and works very well with really high sound quality. If you want to learn more about it, you should check out the review on our April issue. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos. You'll also want to check us out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And for the best in recording technique and technology every month, subscribe to Recording Magazine in print and digital form, available at recordingmag.com. Thanks a lot for listening. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, if it sounds good, it probably is good.